Hi everyone, I've been asked quite a few times to make a video on creating a crusted gecko bath. Um, some people like to call it a sauna. I try to avoid that term now because when you think sauna, you think something really hot and with these guys you never want to go hot. You can scald them. Um, the reason you would give a crusted gecko a bath would be very few reasons. They are generally very, um, they don't need that much maintenance. They're, they're pretty low maintenance. But if they walk through their food, that can cause them to lose their stickiness. And this girl has provided me with the opportunity because she walked through her food and she's very unsticky. She's sliding around on my hand quite a bit. Um, a couple of the other times you might use the bath method is if they've had a poor shed and there's skin still stuck, especially on the toes or tail, you really want to make sure you remove that because it can constrict after a while and um, possibly cut off circulation to the, um, the limb or whatever part of the body it is. Um, and you can also use this method if you find that your crested gecko has become dehydrated, but with good care that should never happen. So, um, But this is a method you can use in any of those cases. What you need is your crested gecko. You also need a plastic container a couple inches deep with a lid. Um, you need some lukewarm water. And I'm saying lukewarm, bordering on cooler, because you don't want to get the animal burned. Um, never hot, never warm to your touch. You can test it on your wrist, like baby bottles. Um, cold also does not quite do the trick. So you just want it a little bit, maybe call it room temperature water. And a misting bottle. And a few Q-tips. What you want to do is take your paper towel and crumple it up a little bit and place it in the bottom of the container. That gives your gecko a little bit to grasp onto. You take your lukewarm water and you're going to pour it in so that there's enough pretty much soak the paper towel, but you don't want it too deep. You want it a couple millimeters deep. Then you're going to take your gecko, who will probably not want to be in this container, so just be prepared for that. Set them in the bottom. And mist well. Try to make sure that the body parts you're trying to work with get a little bit of moisture on them at least. Sorry babe! Watch for faces. <laughs> they like to poke them out. Watch for fingers. And you're going to close the lid. And you are going to sit and keep an eye on this gecko. You are not going to walk away from this gecko. Never, ever walk away from an animal in an enclosed space like this if there is water. Um, you can also, if it will make you feel safer, poke a few holes around it. Um, sometimes this takes away some of the moisture, but it, it, can, it can help you stay safer. Um, you can poke holes, but sit here. Keep an eye on your gecko. Make sure nothing happens to it. Anytime you do something like this, this is serious business, folks. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping your animal safe at all times. You're trying to help it, not hurt it. So just sit and watch your gecko for about 15 minutes. All right, by this point, your gecko is pretty much ready to come out of here. Um, you just want to open up. Some of them will jump right out. Yeah, girl. 
and I can already feel that her feet are less non-sticky, so that's a good thing. We can look at the bottom of here, and you can see that some of the dirt has already come off, and that's good. That saves us a little bit of handling on the gecko. You can take some of your Q-tips get it just a little wet just kind of roll it on the gecko's foot let her take a grip of it and this is the pain in the rear end part of it you've already done the easy stuff just doing your best to roll some of the gunk off of her feet that didn't come off in the soak. That's a little more junk on there. And you'll just do this for a little bit. Do it gently. Don't scare the gecko. And if you find that there's still um, stuck food or stuck shed that's not coming off with gentle swab swabbings, um, you can soak her again for another 10 or 15 minutes, again keeping an eye on her the entire time. And at the end you'll have a gecko that should be able to stick again. And while she won't really appreciate what you've done, <laughs> she'll at least be able to climb a little bit better.